Hercules Mulligan was an Irish American tailor who was born on the 25th of September 1740 to his father Hugh and his mother Sarah Mulligan. Six years later, him and his family immigrated to New York City where he attended King's College, now known as Columbia University. After he graduated, he worked for his father as a clerk for his accounting business. Later, he opened up a tailoring and haberdashery business catering to wealthy British officers. During October the 27th, 1773, Hercules Mulligan married Elizabeth Sanders at Trinity Church. Sanders was the niece of the Admiral Charles Sanders of the British Royal Navy. Hercules and Elizabeth had eight children together, five daughters and three sons. Mulligan met Alexander Hamilton shortly after Hamilton arrived in New York City. Mulligan's brother Hugh introduced them to each other. Mulligan also knew the Cougars who Hamilton had clerked in St. Crocs. Mulligan helped Hamilton enroll into the Elizabethtown Academy in New Jersey and later the College of New Jersey at Princeton, now known as Princeton University. The two moved in together in New York City after Hamilton enrolled into King's College. Hamilton's thirst for revolution was greatly impacted by Mulligan. In 1765, Mulligan was one of the first colonists to join the Sons of Liberty. The Sons of Liberty was a secret organization that protects the rights of the colonists and fights British taxation. He was also a member of the New York Committee of Correspondence, a group that rallied opposition to the British through written communications. In August 1775, Mulligan and the Corsicans, under fire from the HMS Asia, raided four British cannons in the battery. In 1773, Mulligan and the Sons of Liberty knocked down a statue of King George III at Bowling Green, and then they used the lead in the middle to use against the British themselves. That's America for ya. While staying with the Mulligan family, Alexander Hamilton came to share Mulligan's views. He originally sides with the British before coming to America. Mulligan changed his mind, and Hamilton joined the Sons of Liberty too. As a result, Hamilton wrote an essay in 1775 in favor of independence. In 1776, since Mulligan was a tailor for British soldiers, when George Washington spoke of his need for reliable information, Hamilton recommended Mulligan, which in turn saved Washington's life on two different occasions. The first occurred when a British officer ordered a watch coat one evening. He bragged about it to Mulligan, saying, Before another day, we'll have the rebel general in our hands. Then Mulligan quickly told Cato, his slave, to go inform Hamilton, who was at the time Washington's secretary of treasure, and therefore avoiding his death. The second time Mulligan saved Washington's life was two years later, in February 1781. Sir Henry Clinton, a British general, learned of Washington's plan to travel to Rhode Island via the Connecticut shoreline. Clinton had ordered 300 troops and transport boats to intercept Washington. And who was responsible for loading these boats? With provisions for the journey? None other than Hugh, Hercules' older brother. Hugh promptly advised Hercules of the plan. Hercules dispatched Cato, and Washington immediately rerouted his course and arrived safely in New England. Hercules and Cato both had their scars from the war. Cato was captured and beaten on a return trip to New York after passing information to Washington, and Hercules was put in jail after a suspicion from the British, but not before long he used his Irish charm to get out. After the war, Hercules was accused of being a loyalist sympathizer, but that was all cleared up on the evacuation day parade after Washington came over to his house and had dinner with him. After Washington became president, he continued to update his wardrobe at Hercules' shop, and Mulligan changed the sign outside to say, Clother to General Washington. Hercules stayed in business for years to come, and him and Hamilton became two of the 19 founders of the New York Manumission Society, an early American organization founded to promote the abolition of slavery. Hercules Mulligan's grave lies next to his friend Alexander Hamilton at Trinity Church in New York City. And so ends the history of Hercules Mulligan. 
one of the most important people in American history. Without him, America may never have come to be. So I'll see you in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this one. And don't forget to suggest a topic in the comments below. Because I'll be looking and the next video could be about the topic you chose. I'll see you next time.